Hello. Welcome to Wandering Drew. I am Drew. Decided to get a little change of scenery today. It's the second time I've tried to film out here. Last time a thunderstorm went through, so we'll see how it goes. On today's video, I'd like to discuss weight. In a few of my videos, and if you watch camping videos where they talk about equipment and options, uh, one of the things that you frequently track is the weight, the weight of the item, and you frequently see and hear hikers constantly talk about their weight. So in a few of my videos, I cover some of the equipment I've been buying. I've been uh, buying new equipment lately, and the question of weight came up. And they basically asked, what's the big deal about the weight, and is it so important to sometimes spend what seems like a large amount of money to drop your weight a little bit? So in response to that question, which we had a discussion, I decided to do this episode. Very frequently, you'll see on sites, it's recommended that a backpacker's pack weigh approximately 20% of their body weight. There's a problem with that 20% rule. It's not very useful for people at either end of the spectrum, either very light or very heavy. For instance, a 110 pound hiker, which could be a teenager or a female, if they went by that 20% rule, would only be able to carry 22 pounds. And then on the other end of the spectrum, if you had a 250 pound hiker, they would only be able to carry 50 pounds. I wouldn't want to carry a 50 pound pack. I have in the past, and I can honestly say, I much rather carry a lighter pack. So what that really means is this 20% rule is really impractical and it's really a rough guide and really should be used as that. Pack weight will change based on several factors. Obviously, personal preference, the equipment you buy, how much money you have in your budget, the trail that you're doing, the season, what the weather is. Okay, in winter, generally the gear is heavier because we need to carry warmer gear and more of it. Also, if we're going on a longer trip, we generally would probably have more gear. So there's a point where you can only reduce your gear weight so much due to technology, in other words, what's out there, and a lot of times, more importantly, how much you can afford to spend. Weight is a finite measurement of subjective choices. What that means is your weight is based on a lot of different factors, including sometimes advertising and personal preference. Some people like certain gear, they're loyal to certain brands, or they see other people using certain brands and they buy it too. Doesn't mean it's the best gear for them, or it might just be the gear that they have, or they borrowed, or they were able to, to use for this hike. A lot of different brands or gear will get the same job done. So in essence, you can use a backpack from any of the major manufacturers and go on a hike. And that pack may not really fit your hiking style or how, what gear you like to carry or how you like to carry it. So once again, there's many different manufacturers of different gear because there's many different people with different thoughts, opinions on what they need to carry and how they want to carry it. And many gear companies have started due to the fact that someone didn't like the gear that was out there and decided to make their own. So in order to compare gear from all the different brands, we need to basically find a way to make an apple to apple comparison. And that comes down to weight. And frequently that's called base weight. So base weight is a term that hikers use to compare their equipment that they're carrying, their hiking kit, so to say, their backpack of all the gear that's in there, not including any consumables. Base weight is a hiker's pack weight less consumables and not including any of the clothes that the person is wearing at the time they're going hiking. So it's basically what's in your pack when you take away anything that's going to be consumed or change during the hike. And those things would be water because you may carry more or less and you're going to drink it. So it's going to fluctuate throughout the day and the hike. Food, which generally starts out high. And as you go along more days, you eat the food and it gets lighter. And fuel, which generally you tend to use to cook your food and heat water and make meals and coffee and things like that and tends to go lower as you stay out longer. So those items 
are not counted in what's called your base weight. In computing base weight, you should also count the weight of all your empty water containers and your food bag. The only thing I generally don't count is the can of fuel that I'm carrying because I generally don't know the empty weight, but if I can find it, I might use that because I'm going to use the canister up. And this is a way to get the most accurate weight that I'm walking out the door with in my backpack. So the base weight of hikers seems to vary, but most people that I run into and, you know, uh, tend to be somewhere between the late 20s through 40 pounds. You tend to have heavier hikers, usually if they're newer hikers or younger hikers. I want to say if they're inexperienced and they don't know, they tend to overpack or they are just starting out and they buy, you know, lower price point items generally because they're not into the hobby yet. And it's very, very hard sometimes to justify right off the bat spending several hundred dollars on a sleeping bag or a tent when you see a lot of tents that are lower priced. And you don't really sometimes understand the full impact of having a lightweight tent or a light kit as you're hiking. So, you know, you figure, ah, I put on 20, 25 pounds of, on my pack and I carry it. I feel comfortable, so I'm good with that. So generally you put on a pack and you might have, you know, 15 to 20 pounds in it or 30 pounds in it and it feels good and you walk around a little bit and you feel fine and that's true but you're not going to know how you're going to feel with that pack after 10 or 15 miles big difference and there's no way to really know that except for walking the 10 or 15 miles i generally don't ask people their pack weight but it seems to be a question that most hikers seem to ask other hikers so i usually get an answer from them because they're usually willing to tell you how much they weigh and i have seen people hiking with almost 60 pounds of equipment on the AT for someone that's just starting out and is a newbie in terms of they've never hiked before and they just have a lot of extra gear. Obviously, I think even 40 pounds now is a little bit heavy for me. I would like to be lighter than that. Um, I am guilty of carrying too much when I went hiking with my sons in the past because of their age, I generally carried a lot of gear. I would usually carry all the cooking gear, all the water purification stuff, uh, the filter, a bladder. Um, I might carry, you know, extra gear so that they would have less to carry based on their age. So like I said, typically a young hiker who's strong will feel more comfortable carrying weight and doesn't seem to bother them as much. But as you get a little older, you generally want to lighten up. And as you get more experienced, you generally want to lighten up. And the lighter you are, the better your feet, your body, all your joints feel. And usually the faster you can go, which means the longer distances you can go. And if you don't think this true, if you ever go to any of these hiker places where there's a hiker box, look at the stuff that's being thrown away. You'll see some pretty either uh, heavy items or costly items. And a lot of stuff is shipped home as well. But obviously these people are shedding these items and getting rid of them because they're realizing after the first, let's say 30, 40 miles in the, in the case of Neil's Gap, they come off a of blood mountain and they realize I'm a little bit heavy. Sometimes they get a shakedown that um, explains to them why they don't need those items. But a couple of days on the trail is enough for them to get that steep learning curve and realize I don't need some of these items. If you get a chance, go on YouTube and watch some of the shakedown videos of people going through their pack, especially if it's someone else that's going through someone's pack. If a person is going through their own pack, they've made those choices. They're usually not gonna contradict themselves. They may discuss, I may not carry this, but they're generally not gonna say, I've made some bad choices. If you watch a shakedown video of someone else looking through their pack, that's where you usually see the suggestions to get rid of stuff that's not necessary. I also find that people that tend to buy larger packs tend to fill them up. So if you have room, you tend to fill it up. You put stuff in there because you can. So if you can get a pack that's appropriate for the hike that you're doing and stick within that uh, weight classification, the capacity. So if you get a 50 liter pack, stay within the 50 liters, you're generally gonna pack less than if you bought a 60 or 70 pack. I personally think that sometimes too much is wrapped up in weight, you know, gram counting and all these th things. While I think it's important, and I do some of the things that lightweight hikers do, I'm not worried about my weight and counting grams sometimes as much as they are. So while I do count grams at times, and I'm guilty of that, I admit it, um, I'm doing it more for comfort and practicality, not because I want a name or a title. I don't wanna be a 
light hiker and ultra light hiker because I want the title. I want to reduce my weight so I can enjoy my hike more and go further, sometimes go further faster. I also like to keep track of my weight because I think it's a useful tool in seeing where you've come. So I know now my weight now is less than it was several hikes ago. And that's the metric that I'm using. I'm comparing myself to myself. So I can see my weight is going down because I think my experience is better. So I know what to carry, what not to carry, and I know not to carry certain things. And I also realize that I don't need certain things as well as the fact that I'm able to now purchase and I can justify either the expense or afford to save up and buy some of these items that are a little bit more expensive. So I frequently do look at my weight and the change that purchasing an item will bring to it or even to a subsection of my weight. So if I'm looking at my cooking gear, if I'm gonna buy a new stove, what does that do to just my cooking gear setup? So I might just weigh what I'm using now and compare what I'm buying to that. I don't weigh my whole pack and say, what the, will the change be? Obviously, I can figure that out. But I'm really just thinking like, okay, if I'm carrying, you know, one pound, six ounces of stuff to cook and I can lighten down to one pound, three ounces, well, I'm happy with that three ounce change. Now, is it worthwhile for me to spend money, buy a new stove, buy new gear, or just use what I have? And that's the decision that we're all faced with weight trend that's frequently mentioned is the big three. And the big three are generally your three heaviest items that are not consumables. The three items that we generally carry when we're hiking or backpacking that's heaviest is our pack, our sleep system, which includes the sleeping pad, the quilt or sleeping bag itself, could be a hammock even, and our tent. Those are the three items that generally weigh and make basically the core of your weight. Those three items will, will be the bulk of your weight before you start adding food and water. Knowing help you determine where your weight is, in what categories. Is it for your cook system? Is it for your sleep system? Is it in your tent? And what you can do to change it because now you can figure out how can I reduce or even modify it. Sometimes it's very simple changes. You know, just ca not carrying do I need to carry eight tent spikes when I only four will do for most setups? Uh, just little things like that can save you little bits of weight, which lower your weight totally. Just to recap, we want to determine what our weight is and track that because it's important for hikers to be able to compare their weight. And I think it's important as we evolve and progress as hikers, not because I want to say I weigh less than you or I'm a light hiker or an ultralight hiker, just because I'm trying to reduce my weight so I can enjoy my hike and go further. So that's gonna be it for this episode. Uh, really brief, I'm gonna go into on the next episode a little bit of ways that you can shave some weight, what the, some of the biggest weight wasters are, and some tips on how to reduce that a little bit. Once again, I wanna thank you for taking time of your day to watch this video. If you like what you see, please subscribe if you feel so inclined to do so. Leave a comment below. Thank you once again, till we meet again.